the nation's favourite celebrities. Oh, I like surprises. Paired up with an expert. I got excited then. <gasps> Whoopsie. <laughs> and a classic car. Here we go. Wow. Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. For my own safari. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. <gasps> but it's no easy ride. Oh dear. Who will find a hidden gem? Yeah. Mm. Who will take the biggest risk? Will anybody follow expert advice? I hate it. There will be worthy winners <laughs> and valiant losers. Double drat. Oh, no. No. Put your pebble to the metal. Spend, spend, spend. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. New balls, please. Today, we're in the company of two titans from the world of tennis. The brakes are a little suspicious on this car. Oh, oh no, oh no! <laughs> it's Judy Murray and Greg Ruzetsky. So we're starting to rattle now, Judy. <laughs> I, I always rattle. <laughs> it's my age. Oh no, you're but a spring chicken, Jude. I'm loving the fact that I'm going to be driving this car most of the day, although I am prepared to give you a shot of it. They're cruising Caledonia in a 1974 MGB. This is a summer's day in Scotland today, isn't it? <laughs> Judy is a former British tennis champion and, of course, mother of two of the sport's biggest hitters. Among the brothers' extraordinary achievements, Jamie and Andy Murray both attained number one world status in the doubles and singles games, respectively. Aldi, that's the tops. When I told my kids I was going to do the antiques road trip, they said, is that because you're an antique mum? It's <laughs> very funny. You're certainly a national treasure, though. Receiving an OBE in 2017 for services to tennis, women in sport and charity. I've heard some old stories of when you used to play against Virginia Wade. <laughs> she said you were slightly competitive. So the said. truth's coming out now, Judy. But Greg's also a fierce competitor. The former British number one is now a successful tennis pundit. Today's tussle is a hunt for antiques with £400 to spend. Mind the tractor. I always like to beat the Scots when I'm here in your hometown, Judy. <laughs> I'm not a fan of losing. And I think once I get going, then you're going to find yourself in trouble. Sounds like you better ace it, Greg. I think they only give us about 400 quid, but you know, don't tell anybody, but I'm going to surplus myself a little bit with a few more pounds. Good grief. we better have some good experts to keep them in line. That's a monster, ever. Is it a bull? Bull. That is a bull. I would say that's... My goodness, look at the size of it. That's got a bit of Charolais in it. And an Angus. <laughs> it's Angus Ashworth with Raj Bisram in the 1969 Morgan 4-4. I've always wanted a Morgan. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think they're going to give it to you. They're not. Afraid not, but if it helps, you're about to meet two sporting legends. What do you call a girl standing in the middle of a tennis court? Annette. <laughs> <laughs> I actually quite like that. <laughs> All I can hope for is that then they don't make too much of a racket. Oh, yeah. I've been doing a little preparation, Judy, for this one. No way, you would. Uh, I know, you know, we're coming all the way to Scotland, <laughs> you're going to have the advantage already because they're going to say, oh, it's Judy Murray, we're going to give her a good price. So I've got to I've know what's going to happen out here today. We're going to get a lot of home support, I think, from the antique shops. Well, I'm going to have to try to use my charm to get a few <laughs> deals today. They're raring to go. I think it's high time for some introductions, don't you? Here they come. Yeah. <laughs> don't run them over, yeah. <laughs> How are you? Nice Greg, to meet you. I'm Raj. Nice to meet you. Nice How are to you? Meet you too. Nice to meet you, Judy. Hi. Yeah, I'm with you today, I'm afraid. So. so you've got you've got Murray on your side. We're in Scotland. What an advantage! And I know I've got Without Scottish doubt, name, so I mean, we've got <laughs> it in the we back. Are really yeah, happy. Yeah. 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 But you've given. got charm, yeah. I hear, and style, so we should be fine. Charm and style. And you've got the looks. Well, let's not let's not <laughs> exaggerate too much. Yeah. Now. I think we should beat them to it. All right, really? let's do it. Yeah, come on, let's get going. Brilliant. And they're off. Let's get off. We want to beat Judy and Angus to the first shot. Uh, typical, them trying to get ahead, but a little bit on no shortcut will beat them. Well, step on it, you two. This dashing duo of motoring. You know, what I notice is you've got quite a flair for your dressing, Raj. And really? I a, did you get a good deal on that shirt? <laughs> to be honest, I thought I was underdressed today. Really? Yeah. I'm Are you usually a little yeah. bit more colourful? Ah, oh, you wait till tomorrow. OK, I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. Is that a threat or a promise? Do you think it's going to be quite competitive. You're both 
obviously there is four seats. It's very important that I do not lose to Greg. Yes, Angus I, I thought that was going to be the case. No pressure, Angus. What's the game plan, then, boys? Well, I'm looking for something different, something non-traditional. I want to be surprised. And we're going to spend the 400 pounds because go big or go home, as they say. Well, no one's heading home. Not any time soon because they've got Scotland to traverse before ending up at an auction in Hamilton. First stop, Dundee. And Cleppington Antiques and Collectibles Centre. Oh, well, we're here first. Hey! Hey! Oh, <laughs> children, come on. They're running in the shop. Oh, it's so rude, isn't it? <laughs> They're keen. This shop's packed to the rafters with offerings from five dealers. How's it going, Judy? Is it? Uh, how's it? It's a bit overwhelming. It is a bit because yeah. there's there's just so much stuff. What what sort of thing are you being drawn to? Is well, it sort this of will not may or... not surprise you, but it's there's um. A tennis racket. No, no. <laughs> I, I would go for something like that if I found one for yeah. sure. Intriguing. Spill the beans, Judy. So it's um, here, little okay. Victorian money purse, and I, I really like the. Uh, that one. I like the idea of that it's shaped. Like a, it's a Victorian stocking, stocking, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's quite sweet, is that actually? Novel, isn't it? It's quite I mean, different, it, isn't it? It's just sort of a base metal and sort of crocheted work, so it's it's not any particularly sort of high value, but it's it's the value's in the novelty really. Forty five pounds. Too expensive for that, you think? Or, well, or difficult I, I, to get more we, than Well, that? we we could see your powers of negotiation. But it's quite sweet. So I think that's quite it's different. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Different cells. Stockings are they a big thing in Scotland? I'd say thermal stockings. <laughs> <laughs> so, the purse is a possible. I think it would suit you. It look good, you know? Any such luck for Greg and Raj? Are you serious? There you go, Raj. A definite improvement. <laughs> well, the Raj. Left or right, Judy? Uh, left. Left. Oh, right. my God, look at this. That's Darth Ruzetsky right there. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are having way too much fun. Uh, well, yeah, but we're not making any money because yeah. we, can't, we can't find anything. Well, you guys keep playing and, you know, with your toys and we'll go do some real work, yeah? OK, okay. yeah. Angus, put yeah. the kettle on for us, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, Raj. <right. laughs> There's no time for tea. Tat, tat. These are a bit different, aren't they? Good glass vases. Yeah, stick some... Uh... Lily vases. <laughs> How do you know they're Lily's vases? Because Lily's still wearing them. Actually, in the style of the American orchid Jack in the Pulpit. This one says 28, and that 28, one 28, 48, 60, so 76, the pair. Bit of negotiation. They're quite striking, actually, aren't they? They are, actually, aren't they? Do you like them? Yeah, I do. I really do. And I, I would never have even spotted that. We also shape. make a good team. <laughs> could, could be mixed doubles, couldn't we? We got some too. Yeah, Look, love it. We're making good progress, I think. <laughs> what about the other two, Greg? Yeah. Come and have, have a look at this at last. What do you think of these? Yeah, I think these stone lions. I think they could do quite nicely, actually. I mean, garden statuary is really sought after. Well, and... especially in the countryside as well, too. Well, they look like they've got some age to them as well. Yeah. Uh, so I like them. It's going to come down to price. Let's get Dina Derrick in to talk money. Yeah. OK, we've seen something that we like the look of. These stone lions, what is the best you could do on those? £60. Pound. Oh, no, too heavy. I brought my man with me to lift them up, so that's quite good. Uh, See, come on, Greg. <laughs> that's right. I, I, you go ahead now, Raj. You try that. <laughs> me? There's no way, OK? There's no way. I'm OK with a leaf. OK, okay. well, fair enough. What about 30 for the two? No, I can't do that. £50. Pound. OK, well, why don't we split the difference? 40 Go on, then. All right, thank you so much, uh, Derek. First deal of the day done. £360 left and still more to see. But, Derek, you'll need it inside. We've found these vases, haven't we? We have. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah we found them upstairs and uh, we rather like them as a, as a pair. 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 Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they should go as a pair. Oh, absolutely. To split them up, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, this says 48 and that 28, so is it £28 the pair? No, 48 for, for the big one. 28 for the small. Oh, right, so they're individual play. No. no. Oh. Ah, cheeky. I'll do the two, £50. Pound. Oh. Oh. We were looking at about 40, weren't we? 45. 
Okay. Yeah, should Let's we do, do a deal? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll hold that because you've got the monies. Uh, I've okay. got the money. I've got the money in my back pocket. Judy's got the purse strings. I feel like Dale Boy. <laughs> Lovely jubbly. And with that, they're off, with £355 left in the coffers. Oh, Judy, first buy done. Oh, right. no, look at them. I think they're tremendous. Gonna they're go. so unusual. Yeah, they're going to go well with the Morgan, aren't they? <laughs> I'll try point. not to drop them, though. <laughs> yeah, best not. Greg, what do you think of that one? Um, I quite like this painting. I think it, it could be something that we'd be interested in, in, in getting, just because it's got the signature of the artist. Scottish artist Sir William Russell Flint. Well known for his nudes. This is a castle on a cliff. Let's call Derek in and see what he can tell yes. us. Derek? Yeah? Come in. Derek? Yeah? Tell us uh, about this picture. Uh, Russell Flint. Yeah. Print. About 19, I would say, about 1960s, 50s, 60s, by, by the frame. Ticket price on this signed artist's proof print is £65. I was thinking maybe about 15 to start off with. Oh, definitely wouldn't do that. If we move that up to, say, 20, would that work for you? 25. 25. That sounds like a fair enough deal. What do you think there yourself, yeah. partner? I think, partner, that sounds like a, a good decision. £25, I think we should go for it. That'll leave them with £335. Okay. Greg, I think this picture is really nice. It's only a print, but Russell Flint, of course, big name. And this mark here is the artist proof mark, which gives us a bit more value. All right, Let's go. On. Nice one, chaps. Meanwhile, Judy is reminiscing about hitting the Strictly dance floor. Hope she doesn't give anything away. It was great fun, but terrifying on Saturday night when you actually have to do something that you rubbish at in front of a live audience, judges, and a TV audience. Yep. So, yeah, terrifying, but great fun. They're headed to St Andrews to find out how a traditional Scottish dance form was saved in the nick of time. And don't worry, Judy, this time the pros have taken to the stage. For now. I'm getting a little bit nervous, actually. <laughs> Seriously. Just after any dancing, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, you're bound to have dancing feet. <laughs> Country dancing, a type of social dance for couples, gained popularity in England in the mid-17th century. It only arrived in Scotland after the Union in 1707. Very elegant. The traditional dance continues to be taught today by instructors like Rachel Shankland. So, Rachel, tell us a little bit about what we're watching down there. Um, we're watching the jig light and airy. They certainly look light and airy on their feet. Yeah. <laughs> so, originally, actually, English, not Scottish. That's a bit... Yeah, what's yeah. that all about? Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> there's, English, there's English country dance, there's Scottish country dance, and as dancing moved up to the lowlands of Scotland, gradually uh, went north with lots of dancing all over all the different cities. Um, there was different dancing masters called dances who had taught the... Um, favourite dancers of the time. By the 18th century, country dancing had taken Scotland by storm. The unique Caledonian style would evolve from a fusion with traditional Highland dance originating from the clans. Scottish country dancing would go on to influence Cayley dancing at social gatherings forever. And what is it about it that makes it so unique? Um, I think it's the history of it as it's progressed over the centuries, but also the, um, the footwork were more precise than other forms of country dance, and um, the kilts for the men as well. <laughs> I, I didn't wear mine today, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for that. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Angus. I've heard you've got the legs for it, mate. In the 20th century, country dancing came close to dying out as newer forms of dance took over. So, Rachel, what dance are we seeing now? Um, you're seeing the reel, the triumph. Reels uh, relate back to the Middle Ages and there are quite lively dances. Um, this one is a traditional one that is uh, quite commonly danced and it uh, links back to the early 1800s. Wow. I mean, how have these dances survived the test of time? We talked about the dancing masters earlier. They kept them alive throughout the 18th century and the triumph was in the first book that was published by the society. And now we have um, over 50 books published with lots of different dances. 
It was two women, Jean Milligan and Isabel Stewart, who wrote the first book of 12 dances by recalling them from their own childhoods. They went on to create what's known as the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society. We have now have dancers not only in Scotland, but all over the world. Great Scottish export. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> One of the dances to make it into Jean and Isabel's book was this, the Strathspey, originating in Scotland in the early 1700s. I mean, you should be absolutely fine this doing Strictly. I mean, you've had professional Did you see lessons. me do Strictly? I'm Scottish, so I could be It's in your blood. I mean, you should be able to do this with your eyes closed. Well, there's only one way to find out. I hope you've got your dancing shoes on. Right hand half turn. Scottish dancing continues to go from strength to strength. And circle. With the society now boasting some 11,000 members around the world. All thanks to the two women who almost a hundred years ago preserved the tradition for generations to come. Left hand. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo! It's a ten from me. So let's hop foot it to Greg and Raj. I don't know about you, but we've got a lot of money left and I'm for spending it. Angus and Judy, are they're really competitive, so we have to be careful, because you know they want to win. They're quiet, but dangerous. <laughs> it's always the quiet ones, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, silent like farts. Luckily, they're headed a safe distance away to the village of Glen Cars. Antiques and coffee, what more do you want with your life? There we go. It doesn't get any better, does it? Nope. Not in my book, Greg. <laughs> Next up is Michael Young Antiques, which is full of high-end treasures. Let's get shopping, Greg. All right, let's go in. Remember, the boys have £335 left to spend. Oof, 425 I think I'll pass. Raj, I think we've found something within our budget. Really? Ooh! A Lake Victorian oak sideboard. You sure you can afford it, Greg? Yeah, it's, it's only about 100 times more than we have to spend. <laughs> It's only 40 grand this Oh, table. is that all? Well, I, this, is, see, this is where you really can show me your negotiating skills. Even for me, that would be tough to get down to 335 pounds. Yep, it might be pushing it a tad. Keep looking. Greg, I saw these earlier. They're little... I mean, these are so well made. If you have a look at the detail that's gone into these, they're absolutely super. I mean... I mean, the bottoms are quite impressive. It's almost like a horseshoe yeah, underneath of a yeah, horse. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe a blacksmith would have actually made the, the, these uh, studs and uh, the horseshoe-shaped thing. I mean, it's really lovely. So how old do you think these are? These are definitely 19th century. These would have cost a lot of money in the day. Yeah, and they're up for £145 today. Well, let's see what we get these for, because if we get them for the right price, we should do it. Michael's the man. They need to charm. Michael. Can we make you a one-time offer? Greg? Well, can we offer you 40 quid for those shoes? What? You're going to have them for 40 quid. Thank you oh, very thank you much. Very much. Indeed. Thank you so much. What? A generous discount? He's just caved in. I'd try £300 for the sideboard if I were you. Strike while the iron's hot. These spoons, OK, I mean, actually, look at the case. I quite like the case. The case is there. But these are apostle spoons. There would have been 12 originally, uh, yes, the 12 apostles. apostles. Now, if these were genuine silver apostle spoons, these would be worth thousands. But these aren't, OK? Yeah. That's, 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 that's the bad news, OK? Because these are just copies. But they're actually quite well made. Yeah, the quality you know? seems uh, excellent. Michael, tell me what you know about these, please. They're not 17th century apostle spoons. No. They're fairly, very much later. Beautiful apostles on them, look at that. Yeah, I mean, they are. What's the best you could do on them? 60 quid, would that suit you? Oh, I t to be honest, I would prefer 
to pay a lot less than that. Can you do any better? Well, do, you, do you think we could get it down to 20 quid and make a deal on that? Well, I don't know. You've had a hard day, so let's say 20 quid. <laughs> let's shake on it, Michael. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Good Lord. Now, that's another fantastic deal. Well, I'm blowed. <laughs> Well, Greg, have you had a good day today? Oh, it's been a fantastic... Your first day road tripping. I know, it's been an adventure. It's my first time I've done this properly. It's been, it's been very different working with you. <laughs> <It's> been... <laughs> <laughs> different good, I'm sure. Now, what about the other pair? One shot down. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, really well, good. You're still talking to me, so that's that's something. <laughs> <laughs> and you danced. I mean, what's I not to love? Well, yeah. <laughs> less said about that, the better. Yeah. Don't have any nightmares, Judy. Sleep tight. Next morning, our tennis twosome are limbering up for the second set. I know how competitive you are. Not at all, Jim. You <laughs> women are. You've been researching all of this. You are so well informed. Don't, and you're believe, so don't believe everything you hear. <laughs> yeah, pull the other one. Right, I'm not a fan of losing, and I wouldn't like to lose to you, that is for sure. Well, can you imagine living <laughs> in Scotland to Rosetsky? I mean, that would really be a problem for the Murrays. It would. Shocking. <laughs> My kids would never forgive me. Oh, no. <laughs> Things are hotting up. I hope our experts are firing on all cylinders. We've got two tennis professionals. I mean, of course they're going to be competitive. Oh, and Greg, yeah. without a doubt, he wants to win. I'm telling you now, he wants to win. Well, I think Judy, she, she plays it quite quite like, you know, she's, she's not that bothered and it's just a bit of fun. But I think under the surface, she is. Yeah. She wants to beat him. She was laughing a bit at me, which, you know, wasn't very well, nice. Well, to be honest, yeah. a lot of people do that. Well, it was my dancing. <laughs> I, I thought it was quite good, but, um, <laughs> you know. Angus, have you seen yourself in the mirror? Maybe you should say that. With Angus, I could see on his face what he was thinking all the time. So I'm not sure if he's the best poker player. <laughs> he's right. Let's put him to the test. It's show and tell time. He's loving that car. He is. He loves it, doesn't he? Yeah. Hey, well done. Good morning. 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 <laughs> How are you? Good. You sleep well? Oh, very well. Hi, Greg. How are you? Are you? Yeah, we're good. Well. Yeah, yeah, we are. Your head? How are you, eh? I'm good, you're thanks. You're yeah, you're right. Yeah, good, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, do you want to see what we got yesterday? We'd love to, wouldn't we? Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> I think so, yeah. These. Look at these. Yeah, I'm looking. Wow. <laughs> Look at those. Very nice. They're very nice. What do you think, Greg? Uh, Lovely. Would aren't you they? have those in your house, is the question. Judy would. I would. Really? Oh, yeah, I think they're stunning. They, on a, you know, in the centre of a table, on a sideboard, very striking. So, I mean, they were, they just jumped out in the shop. I mean, okay. in that sea of Not items, they were just there, and you could just see them. At £45, the vases were but a snip from their budget, and they're only by. Well, what did you get? Well, come and have a look. Put these okay. away. These are rather special because these were made for a giant. Yeah. Okay. You ready for this? Well, so I said they were made for a giant. <laughs> well, no, they're, they're children's, aren't they? East Lancashire clogs, they are. Perfect. Yep. Spot I've on. done a bit of clog dancing in my time, and uh, that's what about they your are. dancing. Vintage clogs. They uh, are. Are they wooden? The wooden sole, yeah, and then they'll be iron shod look underneath. At those. How much do you pay for them? Are you going to tell us? 15, 20 pounds, something like that? Uh, to be honest, you're close. You're very, very close. We paid 40 for them. Fantastic. And I, I was over the moon. Greg and Raj were also enchanted by a pair of composition lions, a Russell Flint signed proof, and a set of six apostle spoons, spending just 125 pounds of their 400 budget. Have a lovely, have a lovely day. day. Yeah, you have you fun too. too. Not terribly sincere. Right, on to the shops. Big shopping day today, Judy. Yeah, we're off. We need to do better today. We are going to be on fire today, don't you worry. Oh, a little unnerved, are we? What did you uh, make of the shoes? The clogs. Yeah. What I liked that underneath of them was the horseshoe thing on the Yeah, bottom. the iron shodding yeah. on them. I'm not, I mean, 40 quid? Really? I, I Some don't people think spend more than that on that. I don't, I don't think there's any profit in them, if I'm honest. I hope not. Yeah, you know, they were taking the mick out of our little shoes there, weren't they? They were taking the mick out of our little shoes, and uh, to be honest, I think it was more jealousy. What did you think of the vases? Not a lot. Uh, I think we, we, Greg, should be very confident. Do you think we'll beat him? Uh, yeah, I do actually think we'll beat him because okay. uh, I'm confident you are going to help me to okay. identify no pressure, some extra yeah. special yeah. pieces. 
I see what you did there. Just pull the blame on me. Just, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's almost time to gird those expert loins, Angus. Next stop for him and Judy is Ward Toll. Second shot, raring to go. Country homes and takes, here Looks we come. Why does it? There's 1,400 square feet of collectibles here. Let's get hunting. Anything catching your eye, Judy, if we... Uh... Well, actually, like this. Yeah. Which is a little bit random, but it's quite cool, I think. The old gong. The old gong. What would you use that for? It's decorative. Call, uh, call the children to dinner. Or grandchildren, maybe. Maybe in Downton Abbey. I'm not sure about Hamilton. I think that's a pass. Anything else sort of caught your attention? Well, I saw a really cool Art Deco scent bottle you through here. You terminology, <laughs> It's only because it says it on the tag. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would know what that was. Oh, tell us more. That's quite striking, Santa. It's different, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Sixty-two pounds. Mm -hmm. Too much? Much too much. Are we going half of that? Yeah, really. So we'll, we'll keep that as a possible, and mm -hmm. uh, let's see if we can find something else. Okay. Judy Murray. <laughs> Good idea. She's clearly got her eye on the ball, eh? <laughs> Hang on. Is that? That's very thoughtful some of you. Strawberries and creams. Would you like some? Yeah, of course yeah. I would. I bet uh, Greg and Raj aren't getting these. No, this is preferential treatment. I oh, know. No. Well, especially for you. Here we go. Oh, lovely. Where did you get these? I just went and picked them. I don't know. <laughs> you did not. I did not. I just They're thought delicious. make you feel, you know, like you're back at Wimbledon. And because I mean, this is like the finals, isn't it, really? Yeah, I yeah. mean, this is almost as good. O almost. <laughs> <laughs> almost, indeed. Time? <laughs> His Raj look, Jester with his bad jokes. <laughs> it's even got a pink outfit on. Well, wow. actually, that's probably going to be a Dalton little figure, which Dalton figure's really gone off the boil. But there's one chap that, if you're going to buy one of these, if it's got his name on it, they can do really big money, yeah. and that's CJ Noak. A renowned Dalton designer of the late 19th and early 20th century. So it's... <gasps> CJ Nook, the jester. Mm-hmm. Came in different colours. Some colours were more valuable than others. That could be a little good find hidden up there. Yeah. £60. Pounds. Ooh. Good? That's... Not good? Yeah, I think that's all right. OK. Um, obviously, we want to get down from there. But I've seen these anywhere from sort of £50 pounds up to a couple of hundred pounds. I think it's a sign, though, the jester. The jester. When we've been with Rajol. I know. I oh, my God, he's not that funny, is he? Well, he thinks he is. That's know, the most important thing. I mean, it, it would fit quite well, cos it could be a court jester, couldn't it? Court tennis. Oh, Angus. Time for a rally with the man in charge. Andrew. Hey. Hi, how are you doing? You all right? I'm fine, yes. Good. We found a few things. Um, one of them's the little jester, cos it reminds us of Raj. Um, I wasn't sure. Was that the size? Well, he, he's, just, he, he's, he's just a bit of a joke. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. yeah. I think there's three sizes of these, and yes. this particular size I've not seen in 40 years of being in the business, so I think you've got a you chance. Know what? We see them all the time down in the The little Russia. ones, do yeah, you? Yeah, 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 loads of them. Yeah, I haven't loads. seen these <laughs> in Scotland. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so loads of them. <laughs> What's he like? He's believing you. Who are you? Oh, I'm right. very convincing. Yeah, I'm just trying to talk it down a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're talking it down. £60 yeah. pounds on it, I can... And uh, I want you to do well with it. What yeah. do I think? I think for you to get out of it, I would need to give it to you for about forty pounds. Right. Okay. Well, that's that's one to think about. So we're looking at forty on that. Yeah. I spotted the mm -hmm. Art Deco scent mm -hmm. bottle. I just thought it was really striking design, really cool. I could give you that for fifty pounds. Decision time, you two. Is there a bigger discount for both? You know, like buy one get one free. Bog off, you mean? If the jester was forty yeah. and the scent bottle was fifty, that's ninety. That together. That we'd offer £75. £70 pounds 75 for, the for the two of them. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. £75. Do pounds. It. Let's okay. go for it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good stuff. 35 for the jester, 40 for the scent bottle, and time to hit a road with £280 still in hand. Right. On to the last one, Judy. Now, where are the other pair? Greg, you grew up in Canada. I mean, it's a vast country. 
you know, when you were younger, you spent a lot of time camping, etc. all the outdoor pursuits. You know, every summer, my family and I, we, we drive down to America, and they had these beautiful campsites where you parked in and you were on the lakes, and you could cook your own food, and you'd be outside camping, and it was absolutely brilliant, so it was good fun. Raj, you look like a man who can rough it and do anything. You've got it in one. Crocodile, Dundee and me, we're like that. Mm. Uh, we'll soon see, because they're about to experience life in the great outdoors in the rural idyll of Carbeth. Hutting is the practice of living self-sufficiently in a wooden retreat and is common in Canada. But the community here have had to fight to keep the hutting lifestyle alive in Scotland. Historian Leslie Riddock is here to fill Greg and Raj in. So can you tell us a little bit about the history of hutting in Scotland? Well, it was actually, after the First World War, soldiers came back from that war determined to have better lives. And it coincided with uh, people getting a maximum working day, getting pay with holidays, and obviously, in wooded latitudes like this, where are you going to go? What are you going to use? You're going to use trees to create huts. It happened most quickly in the likes of Canada and America. OK. And obviously, in the Nordic countries, we're across the North Sea, but we have 600 huts here. They have almost 600,000. Wow. But building even these 600 huts hasn't come easily. A small number of lairds owned Scottish land and had always been reluctant to allow hutting, but possibilities opened up after the First World War. Land values collapsed. And so more sort of entrepreneurial landowners realised they were going to have to do different things. So people were able to find a way in, and that's really where hutting came from at all in Scotland. And then, of course, for Carbeth, there was a special interruption in the war because in the Second World War, in the Blitz, which really hit Clyde Bank that had munitions factories about eight miles walk over the hills, extra huts were built here to let people live here permanently during the war, and some of them never really left. There's one man in particular that Carl Beth has to thank for its hutting community, William Ferris, a native Glaswegian. Ferris returned from World War I looking for a better life, and he knew where to find it. He managed to go through about five of the major battles of the war unscathed with two of his colleagues, and they wrote a letter to the landowner here saying that the thing that had kept them alive was saving money in the hope that they could put it down and get a hut here, because they used to camp here before the war, and it was those memories of this beautiful place that was keeping them alive. They got a response saying no, but actually Ferris was very persistent. He came back here with his two friends. They met the landowner, Alan Barnes Graham. Uh, the two of them got on like a house on fire, and eventually he charmed uh, the, the landowner into saying, OK, you can have some huts, but you know, you will manage it all. You'll do all the paperwork, you'll collect all the money, and in the end, William Ferris was the only guy who didn't get a hut here because he was so busy administering huts for all the working people. Now, he was really astonishing because not only did he set up Carbeth, he set up the Scottish Rights of Way Society, the Camping Club, the Caravanning Club. He set up Britain's first youth hostel uh, near Loch wow. Lomond, again, charming another landowner. And although he was described by them all as a, as a straight-talking rough diamond who came from the working class east end of Glasgow, he was able to persuade landowners to go a little bit. Amazing man. Yeah, amazing man. Leslie, there are a lot of midges around here. <laughs> okay. Can we go somewhere else and continue Absolutely. the story? You've done very well so far, right? <laughs> so let's go to Ali's hut and she can show you what the inside looks like. All right, lovely. It's thanks to William Ferris that hutters like Ali Ferguson can call this place home. Hi, how are you, Ali? She's resided here for some 40 years. I'm Greg, nice to meet you. How did you do? Hi, Ali, I'm Raj, nice to hi, meet you. Hi, Raj. Great. You want to come in and yes, see please. what hutting's about? Yeah. Here we go. This is it. Oh, lovely. This is it. So what you can it's quite wow. small. It's just a single, single space divided up into areas here. For, for different purposes, so. Where's your, like, you know, your bedroom, your your kitchen, all those things that you need uh, uh, living in the... In, well, in the, in the, this is the, the, the bedroom and the mezzanine. OK. All right, I have all the features here. The mezzanine. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, I haven't noticed a bathroom. I mean, do you have water supply here? No. 
what we don't have water. The water's outside. I bring the water in to boil water to do my washing, about the kettle full, same with getting washed. It's all quite good fun. It's actually really good because I employ myself living my life. It's not all to hand. I've got to make it happen. Yeah. That's part of the joy of being a hotter. There are now around 140 huts at Carbeth, and the practice is becoming more popular as people look for environmentally friendly ways to live. Enchanted by the hutting lifestyle, though, Greg and Raj are going to help Hutter Angus build his new home. I think we've got to get one of these high-vis jackets on, though. Right. Here you go, Raj. Thank you. He's unbelievable at building, honestly. Oh, you wouldn't God. know it from looking yeah. at him, but he's incredible. Yeah, you heard of the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> yeah. I had nothing to do with that. That's <laughs> good. Okay. We're going to put this board onto this frame at the okay. front. Sure Where that end up at the window. You, how long would it take you to build this hut? Usually, for me, eight weeks. And now well, you've got our help, probably about, what, 48 yeah. hours? I'm nine weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you supposed to get a screw, though, first? <laughs> Carbeth was designated a conservation area by Stirling Council in 2001. And the Hutters were able to buy the land and preserve their unique lifestyle. Although I think Greg and Raj might do with a little more practice before calling themselves Hutters. Yeah, if you didn't want it straight, that's good. No, they okay, going that's straight, good. right. Meanwhile, back in civilization. Tell me a better thing to do than driving through lovely Scottish scenery. In a Morgan. In a, car, in a Morgan <laughs> with Judy Murray. I aim to please, dear Angus. He and Judy are motoring forth to Clydebank to the northwest of Glasgow. We've got 280 pounds left, Judy. We've got loads of money in the bank. Yeah. We're going to try and spend it all. I think I'd like to, if we yeah. see the right thing. right thing. Well, Judy, with £280 in your pocket, old girl, there should be plenty to choose from at Keen On Antiques. Get it? K-E-A-N? <laughs> I've been here before. Do you recognise it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I think we'll be all right here. Good Scottish lads. Are you listening, Ryan? Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm Judy. Nice to meet you. Hi there. And this is Angus. Oh, uh, you're right. You got Team Scotland with you today. Well, <laughs> semi Scottish. Great. Thanks for having us. Is it okay if we have a look round? Yeah, of course. Um, Thank just you. Just give us out needing help. Thanks very much. Yes. Lots of stuff to see, Judy. Something for Greg. Tennis, Judy. I've got two more items that I need to purchase. Everything that I've bought so far has been kind of ceramic based. So I feel like I want my last two items to be something a bit different from that. How's it going, Judy? Wow, well, I saw a couple of really nice bookends. Oh, okay. They're kind of um, bird marble. Just in the next aisle. Like eagles. Yeah. I and you like live those. somewhere near Glen Eagles ish. I do. <gasps> it's a sign. <laughs> so, could be a sign, yeah. I, yeah. I like I like those. Okay. Well I've I've made a bit of a short list actually. I've have seen a few really? interesting things. Not okay. necessarily high value. Well, let's go and have a look at those then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Right, just this way. Okay. This is one of the things that I've seen, Judy. Uh-huh. I know it? you're probably looking at it and going, what on earth is that lump of metal? <laughs> and what is it? <laughs> well, it's a currently money box. it's a money box, yeah. Yeah. So it's come out of this is Car Donald, which is in Glasgow, munitions factory. Yep. 1919, so end of the First World War. War. Mm -hmm. um, probably come to the end, they've got surplus stuff in the factory and somebody's fashioned it into a money box. Ticket price, £45. It's local interest. Mm -hmm. the, the auction we're going to is not far from here, so it kind of fits. I, I like that because it feels like we're buying a real antique. I like the whole First World War. Scottish interest, munitions factory, surplus. Yep. I like that whole story that goes with that. You've piqued Judy's interest there, Angus. Let's leave them pondering and catch up with Greg and Raj. Greg, it is an honour and a pleasure to be in your company. I mean, you know, you were one of the tennis greats. What has been your best ever tennis match? Well, there, there are a lot of highlights for me, but there's one that's so memorable was when I was playing Pete Sampras in the finals of the Paris Open Masters Series. And this rarely happens in your tennis career is when you wake up and before the start of the match, 
you know you're going to beat the number one player on the planet. And it was just magical. And to be able to be the first British man to ever win that event against the world number one was probably the most memorable moment in my career. Wow. And going to the extreme, what was the worst match you ever played? Well, let's just say there's one player who doesn't beat Greg Grzetsky 10 times in a row with a dodgy back, bad knee, can barely hold his tennis racket, is Goran Ivanisevic. He was a nightmare for me as a player. Oh, really? When I finally beat him in Auckland, New Zealand, and he had a bad back, he could barely walk, called the trainer, was sick, and I still barely beat him in three sets. You've probably forgotten it by now. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> now it's time for Greg's final set against Judy Murray in Glasgow in the small but perfectly formed Emporium Antiques. All right. They've got 275 pounds left to spend. Look, Greg. Have you seen one of these before? Yes, I have, actually. <laughs> you, you have. Now, I'm going to test you, because you've been testing me on my knowledge. Uh, okay. Right? Why do they use the press on a tennis racket? Well, to keep the, the shape, obviously. Because well, it's wood. Well yeah, done. One yeah, point to us. Good. One point to me. And what is the string made out of? As far as I know, they made them out of cow gut and cat gut. But... Well, well, usually cow yeah. gut. How's the grip? What do you mean? Well, how's the grip? Well, so it, it, the grip's not in the best of condition. No, no, it's not. Look, it's but all it's loose. But so, it's solid down there in the butt cap. You see, that's the original Slazenger butt cap, which is okay. quite good. It's a lovely piece. Now, what would you value this at? I guess I'd probably value it about 20 to 40 pounds. God, you're generous, mate. Am I? You're generous. Okay. I thought you were a good negotiator. If you want a fair price with the, with the person in the shop, I think 10 quid and you've got yourself a reasonable deal. That's what these rackets go for. Okay. I don't think this tenor item is going to do the business, will it? I don't think so, but I have to say, I'm, I've learned something, so that's really good. Every day's a school day, Raj. Greg, you've tested my knowledge, OK? I'm going to test yours, because I know you know quite a lot about antiques. What do you think that, that, that is? Uh, well, let's see here. What does it say on there? Is it, what's that, R and N? And then a serial number. Yep. It looks like it'll be something for horses. Really? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Am I right? You are absolutely so, spot on. And so what do you do with this for the horses? OK, this in the, in, in the stables, yep. right? This would be up against the wall, yep. and then the saddles would sit on here. And this actually looks like a child's one. Do you think this would make any money at auction? They do, but we've got. I think they're going to be a lot less than we want to spend. We want to spend at least a three-figure sum. Okay, and that's yeah, what we have to do. Least. Go big or go home, as yeah, they say. Yeah, exactly. That's a spirit. What else could be hiding in here? They look interesting, Greg. Yeah, they do actually. A Saint George cross. I'm not sure, but I've got a funny feeling there might be an area in Glasgow that's called Saint George's Cross. I assume it's the station around here. That's. It's, it looks like a board that you'd have in a station. I think you might be right. OK, there looks like there's a pair of one, two, three there. Let's call you in. Yeah. Hugh, can you help us here with the... We're looking at these three St. George's Cross. What do you know about these? Yeah, so um, these are Glasgow signs from the underground. Uh -huh. and probably 1970s. Um, they are really popular at the moment. Most people are collecting these things. What have you got on them? Because I couldn't see a price. So the price for these is 95 each. OK, Hugh, so that... I mean, that's 285 you're asking. That's obviously retail. What would be the best you could do? I think we could probably do 150, Raj. 150. I mean, that's a pretty good deal. That's not bad. That's yeah. 50 pounds each. Could you do 100 pounds? Since it's for you guys, I'll do 100 pounds. You sure? Yeah. A cracking deal, chaps. Back in Clydebank, Whatever happened to Judy's birdie bookends? So they're just here. Ah, the Eagles <laughs> and the lady from Glen Eagles. They're a very handsome pair. They are. They've got nice colour and sort of veining in them. Little glass inset eyes. Sort of thing you'd have in your house? Ah, I would. Very dashing. They're carved marble and date from the 1920s. £48 on them. They could take somebody's fancy. Do you think Hamilton are big on eagles? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Good spot, Judy. And the little bird told me that you found something else, Angus. The other thing... Now, you, you might look a bit perplexed at this. <laughs> this. Seriously? What is that? Well, it's uh, a vacuum pump. A what? A vacuum pump. <laughs> Obviously. Originally, you would have pumped this, which creates a vacuum, you would have had a lead on there, you put diesel or petrol in your car it. and it, yeah. it, it, it draws it out. Do you know what would happen with this? 
Somebody would buy that now and tart it all up yeah. and turn it into a lamp. I don't even something know why I'm like here. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get a nice I bit of copper that. tubing on there or something, put a lance on it, that makes a great feature piece. As so, a collector's piece. quirky, different, unusual, yeah. and it's Scottish. It's Scottish. So <laughs> I'm trying to tick the Scottish <laughs> box. Ah, and it's £75. Decisions, decisions. It's between the pump, the bookends and the money box. I think all three are possible, okay. and I think what we should do is go and find Ryan and see if we can, what we can negotiate the best prices on. Oh, yeah. Good thinking, Jude. Ryan. Hello. <laughs> we found a few items, something, Judy. We have, yeah. Yeah. Great. The Eagle bookends. Yeah. Got £48 ticket price on them. OK. The, the little military money box, they've got about 45 on that. And the yeah. pump, I couldn't quite make out the ticket if it was 25 or 75. A 75, you cheeky monkey. The, the Eagles could be 20. The Wii Money Bank mm. could be 20 also. OK. And the vacuum pump, 15. I think, given that the other three pieces that we've bought are all ceramic, yeah. I think I'd like to go for the two antique Scottish things. So, that's £15 for the vacuum pump, I can't believe that, and 20 for the munitions money box. Very kind and generous discounts. Thank you. Auction, here we come. Here we come, here we come. I mean, Greg, it's going to be difficult for us. We are here on Judy's home patch. I think we still have a good shot, but it's going to be tough. Judy, all the hard work's done. And we'll serve them up a treat at the <laughs> auction. <laughs> It'll be ace. Yeah, certainly will. Sweet dreams. Auction day is upon us. The top's down and spirits are up. I feel like I've got home advantage here. Does that worry you? Yeah, it does worry me. For some reason, this Murray family is quite popular over here in Scotland. <laughs> I'll be shouting, that's mine, that's mine. Get your bids in. I'll be, no, that's not Judy's. <laughs> Our teams began this trip in Dundee, touring Scotland from east to west, and they end up in Hamilton. It's here they're facing a showdown at L.S. Smiley and the Sons. Hello, well, hi, how are you? Hello, how are you doing? Hello, my lady. Hello. Oh, Here wow. we are. May the, the fun begin. <laughs> Hello, doing partner. You all right? <laughs> yeah, see I'm you. fine, thank you. How are you doing, Greg? I'm good. You're looking very yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm really today. sorry that you're not going to win today, but... That's all right, we'll yeah. do our best. <laughs> I've, 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 had a, I've had a very good expert here, so I can't complain about anything. Well, he's got something right today. You've got the brightest yeah. one. <laughs> You've got the... Oh, thanks. <laughs> Ooh! I'm sure she was just talking about the outfits, Angus. Anyway, let's get on with it. Greg and Raj forked out £225 on their five auction lots. Time for Team Judy to eye up the competition. Oh, well, these look good, Judy. Do the they? Apostle spoons. Only they're not silver, they're just plated, so not that good, really. I thought there was 12 apostles. Yeah, there was. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not going to do very well on that, are they? Judy and Angus spent less, £155 of their £400 budget on their five offerings, including one chosen specially for Raj. They said it reminded them of me. I don't understand that. Well, I'm much taller than that. You are definitely much taller and much better looking, I could say, as well. Well, that's nice. This is quite collectible, because I remember it's Dalton and people are thinking of the past. So what do you think of this, Rob? It's collectible. This could do rather well. Yeah, umpire for the day is auctioneer Jim Henderson. <laughs> what did he say? The glass lily vase is quite modern, good condition, though. would find a place in any house. Underground signs from the Glasgow station. Again, got that industrial look. Plus, you've got the real wee collectability. Yeah. We're all set up for bids in the room, on the phone and on the internet. So, to begin, to begin. I'm yeah. sort of nervous, excited, which I think is a good place to it's be. It's a very good place to be. Yeah, well, enjoy. First serve from Greg and Raj with that underground sign. Very unbid, sir. At £30. Oh. At £30 for the underground signs. Five now. And 40 And five. 50 Five. At 55 At 60 now. At 60 bid. Five. At 65 70 bid. At 70 bid. Five. At 75 Come on. Come on. As long as we, on. As long as we break even, I'll be happy, honestly. At 75 at 5. 80 now. At 80 bid. 
85 now. At 85. Yeah, he's going there. We're we'll getting out. At 85. He's milking this. 90 now. And 5. And 95. 100 now. <laughs> at 100. At 100, sir. 110. At 110. At 110. At 110 pounds. Ah! A gruelling rally, but they made it. And a bit more. He had a foot up full head of hair before that yeah, auction. It stalled <laughs> about three times, didn't it? I mean, it <laughs> completely stalled. It's right up there. I mean, look at you. <laughs> now the Jack in the Pulpit vases. Ten pounds, but a ten. A ten. Twelve now. At twelve, a fourteen now. Fourteen, sixty, sixty, but sixteen, eighteen. At eighteen, twenty. At twenty, but twenty. Surely more folks. At twenty, but two with the lady. At twenty-two, four. At twenty-six. At twenty-eight. Thirty now. At 35, at 35, lovely vases. At 35, at 35, at 40 online. And 45 in the room now. At 45 in the sale room at 45 pounds. At 45, at 5, at 45, at 5, at 45, all done. At 45 pounds. Well, it's not a loss. Yes, that's oh, well, well, well done. Well, there's commission off, so it's <laughs> totally lost. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> slight loss. <laughs> Next up for Greg and Raj. The child's clogs. 50 unbid. Had 50 bid for them. Had 50 bid the shoes. Had 50 unbid. Look, they're lovely craftsmanship. Andy Murray used to wear these. Had 60. Had 60 the top corner. Five now online. What once for Jamie and one for Andy. <laughs> when they were kids. At 70 top corner. At 75 online. At 75 online. Look at beautiful. Stunning. Come on. No. Fresh but at 80. At 80 and bid for the shoes. At 80, but 80, 80, 80, but 80, 80, 85 now. At 90. At 90 bid. Five. 100 for the no, shoes. No, 100. Make it 100. 100. It's a bet. I'm bet at 100. 100. 100. All done now. At 100 pounds. And they are striding ahead. Wow. Wow. Well done, guys. Well done. Well done. Well done, well done, well done. guys. That sounded sincere. Judy and Angus next with the fixer upper. 18 pounds online, 20 now, and two at 22, 4, 6, 26, bid at 8 or you're in profit. You go, you're in profit. 30, yeah. Five now, at 35, at 35 bid. 40 now, sir, at 40, at 40 in the sale room, at 40 bid. Five now online. Do you mean you're your slate? Oh, they're doing well. Yeah, we at 50, are. at 50 bid, out online now. Five now, at 55, oh, fresh it's worth, it's worth at 55, more, so. round it up, at 55, at 55 bid, at 55 pounds. Someone else saw the potential there too. Well done. Yes. Well done, well done, well done. Well done. That's great, well done. Profit. Will it be a roar or a whimper from Greg's lion? 30 on bid, on bid at 30. At 30 bid for the pair of lines. 35 now, in the room at 35. At 35 bid for the lines. At 30, 40 bid now, online at 40. At 40 bid, 5 now. 50. At 50 bid. At Come 50 on. bid, 50 bid, Come 50 bid, on, 55 now. At 55 for the Come lines. On. At 55 at 5. 60 now on the telephone. 60 pounds. Yeah. At 60 pounds. <laughs> yeah. At 60 pounds. Is that your mum on the phone? More, more, more. more. No international dialing. Oh, at 60, all done. At 60 pounds in the telephone. Not to be sniffed at. That's about right. Yeah, yeah that's what you said. I told 65. Yeah. 60, 60, yeah. yeah, well done. I think they're about yeah. right. We're going to well do done. Greg and Judy's antique road trip soon. Yeah. Yeah. You guys Absolutely. will be the other ones with yeah. us. <laughs> maybe, maybe, we'll we can, get maybe we can come on and see as your celebrities. <laughs> yeah, you could, you never know. Yeah, maybe not, hey, Raj? The munitions money box now. With interest, this I can start the bidding at £30 oh, in the book. Yes. At £30 for the money bank. Five now, 40, five. At 45 at the back, at 45, 50 now, sir. At 50, at 50 straight in front, and 55, at 55, 60. At 60, yeah. at five. <laughs> it's gorgeous. <laughs> and it's heavy. At 65, good, good taste, young man. At 65, five at 60, five at five at 60, five at five, all done. At 65 pounds. <laughs> Well done. Well, done. well done, well done, guys. Well, well done. done. Yeah, nice find. They're catching up. You've done really well, I have to say, with that, because do you think it's 
because of the Scottish background, or do you think it's because of you, Judy? I think <laughs> no, it's entirely down to this it was a, it remarkable It was a little piece. young lad. He was probably only about seven or eight that bought yeah, it. Yeah, I know. He, he was looking for money. I, I suppose his parents, they said he, they, he just loves Judy. His whole room <laughs> is covered with pictures of really? Judy. Yeah. Really? Can Greg and Raj hold on to their lead with the six Apostle Spoons? 30 on bed straight in front. Five now. 40 and five and 50. At 50 bed straight in front at 50 pounds for the spoons. No, I never see another set like that. At 50 on bed. At 50 bed 50 bed 50. At 50 pounds a spoons. Well God, you're well, so happy about that, aren't you? They smashed it. Yeah. It was the casing and the look, to be quite honest. The, the case is, is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think the presentation of them was nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's not all about substance all the time, it's presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Next for Judy and Angus, the Royal Dalton Jester. Ten for him, ten on bed, ten at ten on bed. At ten on bed, ten, in advance in ten. Twelve now, fourteen, sixteen, at sixteen, eighteen. At eighteen bed, top corner, eighteen, twenty now. And two, at twenty-two, at twenty-two, four. You actually want that in your house? No, I wouldn't, but I thought it was because the, the guy we bought it from said it was a really rare, rare piece in that size. In the room at 26, eight now online. He rounded up to 30. It's slow, but it's fine. At 30 bed, 30 bed, 30 bed, 30 bed, 30 bed, all done. At 30 pounds. Ah, uh, not so funny now, eh? Wow. wow. What did we pay for that? What did you pay for it? 35. Oh! The boys' Russell Flint signed proof is their final offering. Thirty on bed, thank you. Thirty bed, thirty bed with the lady. That's a lot of money. At thirty bed, thirty five online, and forty now. At forty bed, forty bed, forty five now. Fresh butter, fifty now. At fifty, at fifty bed with the lady. At fifty pounds, five now. Sixty now. At sixty, at sixty pounds. Greg and Raj have a big advantage now. Well done. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah good start. I actually would buy that picture myself, to be quite honest. I really like yeah. it. Can Judy's scent bottle change the game? Thirty pound on bed. Five now. Thank you, sir. At thirty-five, forty online, and forty-five seated at forty-five. At forty-five bed, fifty online. At fifty-five now. At fifty-five. Does it always go up in fives? Would anybody come on and say I'm giving ninety? No. Not really. I mean, it'd be nice if they Just did. Just keep claiming. I mean, we're at seventy. It's climbing. Seventy-five. Yeah. We're yeah. getting there. Eighty. At eighty, but five. At eighty-five. Eighty-five. It's climbing up ninety. Then we might hit three figures. Oh, let's get three figures. Ninety-five. One more. Five on bed. Any advance in that with the gentleman? One hundred now. At one hundred. And ten. One ten. At one ten. At twenty. One twenty. That's doing really well. At one twenty. One twenty. One twenty. One twenty. One twenty. All done. At one hundred and twenty pounds. Yes. <laughs> An ace to finish. That was close. Very, very close. close. I, I think we all had a good day, actually. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Should we go? Yeah. yeah. Could we have a tiebreaker on our hands? Well, I've done the sum, so you don't have to. Greg and Raj began this road trip with £400 to spend. After today's sale room costs, they've made a profit of just less than £87, ending up with £486.60. <laughs> Judy and Angus started with the same amount. Taking into account today's auction charges, they too have made a profit of just over £100, meaning a final tally of £503.30. That means it's game, set and match to Team Scotland, with all that profit going to children in need. Well done, guys. It Thanks was a again. Experience. <laughs> no, it's been fantastic. It's been absolutely, absolutely great. Thanks for having us. Uh, Thanks for all the tips. Well, you, and you thanks may... for the victory, partner. Uh, <laughs> well done. See you. It was fun. Brilliant. Bye. 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 Time to hit the road. Oh, this has been a lot of fun, hasn't it, Judy? Yeah, I've absolutely loved it. I mean, it could be a change of career for us. Well, let's not exaggerate now. Too much, Judy. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs>